Right now at 6, the fate of former Chancellor Joe Gauss' tenured position lies in the hands of the UW system. And two more suspects are in court for a lacrosse armed robbery. We're watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us for News 8 Now at 6. I'm Ken Kozarowski. And I'm Emily Brown. Two men allegedly involved in a lacrosse attempted armed robbery appeared in court today. 26-year-old Braxton Sullivan and 43-year-old Marcus Montalvo Razo are both facing multiple charges, including felony counts of armed robbery and first-degree recklessly endangering safety. According to the criminal complaint, on June 8th, those two, along with 18-year-old Hunter Walls, allegedly attempted an armed robbery on Redfield Street. Two shots were fired after they didn't get the money they were looking for. One victim believed the dispute had something to do with their relative owing the suspects $10,000 in drug money. Montalvo Razo is held on a $50,000 cash bond and Sullivan is held on a $7,500 cash bond. The alleged accomplice to a murder in Juneau County is pleading not guilty. 27-year-old Crystal Toomer is accused of helping Donald Dahlberg cover up the murder of Floyd Burdick in January. She's charged with mutilating a corpse and arson, both as a party to a crime. In Juneau County Court this morning, Toomer pleaded not guilty to all charges. She's currently held on a $50,000 cash bond. The fate of former UWL Chancellor Joe Gao's tenured position is now in the hands of five of his peers. They wrapped up day two of the public disciplinary hearing today after Gao presented his case and called on a witness. News 8 Now's Michael Germain was there and joins us now live with the latest update. Michael. Joe Gao questioned interim Chancellor Betsy Morgan on a handful of issues this morning, but ones that stand out is the seizing of his computers. Gao used the Freedom of Information Act or FOIA to obtain text messages between Morgan, the general counsel and chief of police at UWL. The text messages focus on Gao's MacBooks, iPad and iMac. Now Gao claims he never deleted any files or information on the computer before sending it to UWL officials. The hearing ended with closing statements from both sides, where Gao claimed that admissions are still up, and he and his wife's appearances in pornography have not affected the overall image of the university. UWL officials claim it has damaged the image and integrity of the school. Gao says through it all, he believes he presented a strong case and says that him not cooperating with investigators is simply not true. And also the notion that we um, you know, took material off our computers before we turned them in, that's really not true. Um, and those computers were seized from my office and, you know, they were done right away. So we didn't have any opportunity to do anything with them. I question what happened with them after they were taken. I mean, there's some stuff on there that we've never seen before that we didn't put there. So that's uh, very troubling. Now the hearing is in closed session and the panel will decide whether or not Gao will keep his tenured position as a UWL faculty member. Reporting live in La Crosse, Michael Germain, News 8 Now. Thank you, Michael. A written report will be provided to both parties after the panel makes its decision. It is still unknown on when that decision will be made. A lacrosse LGBTQ plus advocacy group is not allowed to set up a booth at tonight's Night of Love Moon Tunes concert. The Center Seven Rivers LGBTQ Connection posted on Facebook yesterday that Valley View Rotary told them about this decision on Tuesday. Now the center's post includes a screenshot of an email from Valley View Rotary Board President Peggy Derrick. Derek writes that the center can't have a booth because of a long-standing policy of not sponsoring advocacy at Moon Tunes, and that if it became po politicized, it could potentially destroy Moon Tunes entirely. Now, tonight's concert is a response to an incident at Moon Tunes last year. At that time, several Seven Rivers members said concert organizers invited them to talk on stage about upcoming events. But while they were on stage, other organizers cut their mics and allegedly used homophobic slurs after ushering them off stage. Derek had emailed the center after that incident to apologize and offer to work with the center to plan what has become tonight's concert. But now the center's leadership says due to the lack of inclusion and in how emails to them have been phrased, they're not comfortable being associated with tonight's event.
It's bigger than just having a table there itself. Um, it's that the apology for publicly humiliating people from the center um, is no good because they didn't follow through on what they promised the center. Kumaro says if there is to be healing, the center needs to see actual action. News A now has reached out to Valley View Rotary for comment. Yeah, for the most part, cloudy conditions continue today. Most areas are dry, but actually Eau Claire is seeing a little bit of light rainfall. This is not going to amount to a lot of rainfall, but it is during the evening commute. We still might see a few showers out there, but dew points, it's really quite moist to the south. That'll carry more moisture. We're kind of just on the north side of that, and a lot of those dew points are going to become further north, so we are going to feel more muggy as we go into Friday and Saturday. But for this evening, a few showers potentially, but I think for the most part, La Crosse will stay dry. Temperatures lowering into the upper 60s. A few showers hours early, but they will dry out for most of the night for Eau Claire. We're getting back down to the mid 60s, light winds, a lot of cloud cover. Right now that system really is to the north, uh, that rainfall and more action as you go further west, but we're not going to see a lot overnight. Actually some partly cloudy skies for some areas. Temperatures will continue to lower into the 60s. All that weather out to the west, really it's going to fall apart. It's not till later tonight that in western Minnesota, east or south Dakota, we get a complex, a, a thunderstorm complex that begins to push towards the area, but not towards really probably after the morning commute. Otherwise, we do have some flash flood watches out to the west, including some of our counties because of the potential for rounds of thunderstorms coming through with a heavy rainfall. We'll kind of break down how much rainfall and what that effect has on the Mississippi River, too, as we go forward uh, later in the broadcast. All right. Thank you, Greg. A bridge in the southern part of La Crosse County is down to one lane. The La Crosse County Highway Department says the bridge on County Trunk Highway G that goes over Coon Creek is reduced to one lane for the foreseeable future. Weight limits will also be reduced. The Tress Bridge is located on County Highway G northeast of Coon Valley. And the Minnesota Department of Transportation warns of traffic delays on the new Highway 61 bridge over the Canadian Pacific Railway tomorrow, today and, and tomorrow. From 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., crews will be transporting and setting nine new support beams. Flaggers will reduce traffic to one lane as each semi carrying a beam arrives. The road will be shut down for about five minutes while each beam is laid into position, then reopened until the next truck arrives. A new bike bridge in West Salem is officially open for business. The bridge is parallel to State Highway 16 and spans the La Crosse River. It's a culmination of over six years of effort between La Crosse County and the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. A La Crosse County official says they received just over $660,000 for the design and construction of the bridge. A WISDOT representative says the new bike bridge is a major upgrade for pedestrians. If there wasn't this bridge there, people would ride the trail that exists that existed prior to this bridge, they would have had to have left the trail, entered the roadway right away, um, and uh, accessed the shoulder, and then traveled along that shoulder. With ten, tens of thousands of cars traveling on this roadway at 55 in this particular area. The new bridge connects West Salem to Onalaska and provides direct access to Veterans Memorial Park. This year's Riverfest Royal Family making their first official appearance today. Mike and Lori Lubinsky are this year's Commodore and first mate. They're stopping at a couple of downtown businesses today to promote Riverfest, including the Children's Museum, where they made paper boats with the kids and tried to get them to float. Next, the pair is heading to Colgan Air Services. Riverfest buttons are available on the Riverfest website for $10. That price will go up on July 3rd. Social media suppression. A new bill in one state is restricting minors' access to social media platforms. The state and those details right after this. On these trails, I find the middle ground and get things moving. I've done that as a state lawmaker, and it's what I'll do in Congress. I'll work with both parties to get things done for workers and families. I've been with U.S. Cellular for 27 years. When they asked me to talk to you about their special customer event, Us Days, I said, I gotta get in shape. Us Days means exclusive deals just for us customers. Us Days is back at U.S. Cellular. Isn't it time you turn your backyard into the oasis you've always wanted? Come to La Crosse Fireplace Company and find your outdoor setup. Imagine gathering with family and friends around your wood-fired pizza oven. Sit back and relax around your new fire table. Available in different sizes and styles to fit your lifestyle and budget. 
Stop in this month and receive 15% off all in-stock outdoor products. Lacrosse Fireplace Company, because your place is outside by the fire. Now's the time to enjoy huge savings on outdoor furniture from Drury's in Fountain, Minnesota. From patio dining sets to sofas and chairs, they're all reduced to clearance prices. At Drury's, we have an eco-friendly mindset that's reflected in everything we sell. Environmentally friendly materials are important to us. And you'll be choosing from Homecrest and other quality brands, furniture that's designed to last. The Outdoor Clearance Event. It's happening now at Drury's in Fountain, Minnesota. Voted your favorite furniture store. I devise a plan to find better home internet, guys. Madison, you scout the web for the best deals. And Ellen... Avoid that hassle and go with U.S. Cellular home internet. No more guesswork, and it is faster than ever. U.S. Cellular new and improved home internet. Just $34.99 when bundled with a wireless plan. Congress has been spinning its wheels going nowhere. I'm Katrina Shankland. In the state capitol, I passed 225 bipartisan laws to help farmers, workers, and families. I approve this message because I have the experience to get things moving. New York's governor has signed a landmark bill banning what she calls addictive social media feeds for kids under 18. Jolene Kent sat down with the governor to discuss what's driving this groundbreaking legislation. Taking action. Um... For mom Bernice Tsai, the battle over social media addiction with her 16-year-old daughter has been a struggle. It makes me mad because I see how social media is kind of using her, I know it's not healthy for her. She's one of many parents who've spoken up in support of the Safe for Kids Act in New York. Democratic Governor Kathy Hochul says the law will make it illegal for social media companies to use, quote, addictive feeds for users under 18. They are being held captive to powerful forces outside their own control, algorithms that are intentionally addictive, intended to pull them in and keep their attention. That means in New York State, no suggested posts will be allowed in kids' feeds. No notifications from 12 midnight to 6 a.m. without parental consent. And new age verification tools to be set by the state attorney general. If the social media platforms do not comply, the attorney general can fine them up to $5,000 per violation and beyond. How confident are you that New York State can keep up with the technological innovation of the most powerful, innovative companies in the world and actually enforce this law. Our attorney general helped propose this with me. The first start is to just change the law, put the companies on notice. NetChoice, which represents Meta and Google, among other major tech companies, says the New York law will violate the First Amendment and censor free speech online. The Attorney General will be responsible for enforcement and they can enforce at will. That's a decision that should be left up to parents, not government and not Silicon Valley. Today's signing comes just days after the Surgeon General proposed that Congress create a tobacco style warning label on social media. Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, said while it does not agree with every aspect of these bills, it does support legislation requiring app stores to obtain parental approval to download apps. TikTok declined to comment. Jolene Kent, CBS News, New York. That New York law is set to go into effect 180 days after the state attorney general determines the exact rules and guidelines. Los Angeles Unified School District Board recently voted to ban students from using cell phones during school hours. Making baseball history. Tonight an MLB game will be played at a ballpark with a big connection to the league's past. And we got some showers for tonight, but really where our attention turns to tomorrow with the storms, round of storms that could have potential heavy rainfall, maybe some severe weather along with it. We'll time off the storm, show how much rain we'll get. That all coming up on your first warm weather update after the break. Ashley Stars and Stripes mattress sale is going on now. Save up to $500 on select mattresses. Plus pay 0% interest for five years with no minimum purchase on all in-store purchases. Only at Ashley. Shop more deals in-store and online.
I always knew that I wanted to be a mom and choosing that it was the right time was just a really exciting moment. It turned out that my baby had a diagnosis that would be incompatible with life. It wasn't just that my baby wasn't going to survive, but it was at risk for hemorrhaging when I delivered. I met with my doctor and we went over the risks and benefits. I made a really informed decision, just like you would for any other procedure you're going to have. I'm a nurse and I'm an example of a woman who had to have a procedure to be able to save my life and to not watch my baby die. And now Donald Trump supports laws that could take that procedure away across this country. 54 years they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated and I did it. Without that procedure, I would not have been able to get pregnant again. But the good news is a year later, I had my son. If Trump gets elected again, I fear for women. AB Pack is responsible for the content of this ad. Get mega savings on mega fresh produce this Thursday through Sunday during hy vees mega produce sale. Basket and bushel strawberries, just $1.49 a pound when you buy a two pound pack. Red grapes, just 99 cents a pound. Candy cantaloupe, just $1.49 each. Plus, over 100 additional produce items on sale. If you're picky about produce and delighted by deals, you won't want to miss the mega produce sale this Thursday through Sunday, only at hy -Vee. Ashley Stars and Stripes mattress sale is going on now. Don't miss these mattress hot buys, now only $7.99. And get a free adjustable base upgrade with an Align by Ashley Sleep mattress purchase. Only at Ashley. Shop more deals in-store and online. You expect more, so thank you for watching News 8 Now. The oldest baseball park in America still in use is making history again tonight. An MLB game is honoring the once thriving Negro League. Rickwood Field in Birmingham and Alabama got a big league upgrade to welcome the St. Louis Cardinals and the San Francisco Giants. The greatest names in the history of the sport have played at Rickwood. 182 Hall of Famers in all, like Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, and a teenaged Willie Mays who played on the 1948 Birmingham Black Barons. This will be the first regular season Major League game ever played in Alabama. Well, it was an overcast start to the first day of summer. It, it felt was. nice outside, though. It was pretty comfortable. Yeah. The Nats are still a big problem. <laughs> yeah, the Nats but are. But let's not blame Greg. <laughs> it's not Greg's fault. No, but I guess the question is, Greg, when is, is it going to start feeling like summer? Well, it's definitely going to feel more muggy going into tomorrow as the moisture begins to pull northward as a warm front kind of lifts. Unfortunately, we're not going to see much in the way of sun probably, but it's going to lead to some heavy rainfall and we still got the potential for some severe storms. I think damaging wind is one thing we'll keep an eye on, but I think the really the rivers, the flooding, the flash flooding potential that is higher really. And right now the river is beginning to rise back up. Uh, we're expecting now to get probably to a minor this weekend for most of the gauges and then probably closer to moderate as we get closer to Wednesday or Thursday next week. This is all subject to change how much rainfall we get through Saturday, but uh, this at least will linger probably for a while. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. If you go further north towards Red Wing, they're actually supposed to get up to major flood stage two with the river. So it's a big deal going on. Potentially could see some bigger issues we go into next week. But for tomorrow's commute, I think most of the area will remain dry. The shower thunderstorms will be just to our west. Tomorrow, it's periods of storms off and on throughout the day. Some contain heavy rainfall, some could be severe. A little bit question of exactly where that's going to end up and they'll continue Friday night and also go through Saturday morning. For right now, we're seeing just a few little showers north of Eau Claire. They saw maybe like a trace or a hundredth from that precipitation and then you go further up to Ladysmith, but that won't last too long. Otherwise, everything will stay to the west overnight with partly to mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures falling back generally around the upper 50s, low 60s, and then the complex that develops up to the west will begin to approach Minneapolis potentially around four. Now there's a lot of differences in how fast this is actually going to get here, but for right now I think it'll stay just to the west of Eau Claire probably in the morning hour. La Crosse, it's probably not going to be till really to the later in the half, closer to noon. We're going to see if this line does develop. If it does, it would come through about noon. That does look have like the potential for some gusty, maybe some damaging winds if it holds together. Not everything is thinking that's going to happen. It might stay to the north too, but that would be more towards late morning, early afternoon. Once that passes, then there's more development and gives more question of where this will develop, but a lot of it's starting to center right around I-90 to just a little bit north of I-90, and that area seems 
seems to sit right along where you see rounds and rounds of thunderstorms, then that's where the flooding potential could sit if it sits right there. So some of these areas just along I-90 or maybe a little bit north. This could change depending on how far south, but it looks like it does sag further south towards Friday with more rounds coming. For precipitation, not much till 7 a.m. You can see that, but then it begins to spread. This is one area we could have to keep the watch keeps that higher amounts just north of I-90, two to three inches. It tapers off quite quickly as you go further south or north. There is another type of solution where it kind of pushes this a little bit further south. This is another idea that could form, and that would be centered right along I-90, but look at those amounts, potentially three to five. So that's kind of the higher end and also pushes it further south too. So a lot of questions remain. A lot of places will get quite a bit of rain, and that continues. Here's one. There's another one going through Saturday morning until finally we get the wind change right there. That's the cold front that will be coming through. I think by Saturday afternoon, everything will be to the east. We should be done with the heavy rain and probably severe weather if we do get any. But for tonight, just a few showers. Otherwise, mostly cloudy conditions should be dry. We go through tomorrow. That's when the rain does pick up off and on through Saturday morning. Potentially for some heavy rainfall, we have cooler, drier conditions for Sunday and Monday before we have another system come through Monday and Tuesday. So we'll have to keep an eye on the Mississippi River because it's going to be probably for the next couple of weeks that it's going to be at least high. And we'll see how high it goes with the rainfall that we receive. All right. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. Coming up next in sports, the loggers back at the lumber yard for two today against Rochester. Not one, but two. Plus, one of UWL's standout track athletes got a chance to represent the United States this weekend in Oregon. Rob is up next. Clear Choice Window and Home Solutions, your choice for quality, affordable windows installed by our experienced team. Contact us or stop into our showroom today for your free estimate. During the 4th of July sale going on now at PM Sleep Center, you can save up to $200 on select Sealy mattresses. Your next mattress is at PM Sleep Center, giving lacrosse a good night's sleep for over 35 years. You know what frustrates me? Is seeing people who are 50, 60, even 70 years old who are worth less today than they were the day they were born. How does this happen? These folks never learned money management. I love talking about money management at Firefighters Credit Union, so if you'd like to learn more, please give me a call. Cause everybody's welcome at Firefighters Credit Union. In the courtroom, we see Donald Trump for who he is. He's been convicted of 34 felonies, found liable for sexual assault, and he committed financial fraud. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's been working, lowering health care costs and making big corporations pay their fair share. This election is between a convicted criminal who's only out for himself and a president who's fighting for your family. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. What do we think? Burglary gone wrong? More like a chilling spree. You see it all too often. When you don't take care and maintain your system, it's all too easy for problems to pop up when you need it the most. It's hard to stay cool under pressure. Proper service and maintenance is worth its weight in the cold. I'm not a fan of having problems. What can you do? Call GT as soon as humanly possible. Don't lose your cool this summer. Call GT Heating and Air Conditioning today. During the 4th of July sale going on now at PM Sleep Center, you can save up to $400 on select Stearns and Foster mattresses. Your next mattress is at PM Sleep Center, giving lacrosse a good night's sleep for over 35 years. Bring all of the exciting action from your community. Here's News 8 Now Sports. UWL's Sam Bleskowski has built quite a resume during his college career so far, and the accolades keep getting better and better. Blaskowski securing a spot in the 100 meter dash at the 2024 U.S. Olympic track and field trials this upcoming weekend in Oregon. Blaskowski is one of just two NCAA Division III athletes out of the 34 declared competitors in the event. The Eagle standout qualified for the trials at the UWL Eagle Open back in May. Blaskowski ran a 10.09 that day. We'll see how he does this weekend at the University of Oregon. The first round takes place on Saturday. 18 of the 34 will then move on to the semifinals on Sunday. Loggers back at the lumber yard for two today against Rochester. Game one all across. Loggers shutting out the honkers 7-0. The nightcap will start at 635. We'll have the highlights coming up at 10. 
Twins trying to start a new winning streak this afternoon. Series finale against Tampa. The Rays pulling away in the ninth. Yandy Diaz, two-run shot, makes it 6-2. to two. Tampa Bay, but Minnesota making this one interesting. Bottom nine, Carlos Santana skies this one high and deep to right. And that ball is way out of here. Solo shot for Santana, cuts it back to three. And with the Twins down to their final strike, Jose Miranda says not so fast. Two on for him. Minnesota miracle at target field. Twins put up a four spot in the ninth. Three run homer, ties it at six. We'd go to extras in the 10th. Rays respond right away. Johnny DeLuca drills one in a center field for a base hit. Tampa Bay goes back on top. The comeback falls short. Twins drop it 7-6, the final score. Last but not least, the action continues tonight on the softball diamond. West Salem's at home for the first time this season. What a night it was Wednesday for their star pitcher in the circle, Josie Brudos. A perfect game last night against Onalaska. And Brudos doing it with her bat as well. Grand slam in this one. That wasn't it. She hit it at some other point in the game. I didn't get that, obviously. Post 51 with the shutout win. We'll see if the bats stay hot tonight. Not ask for a better night. A uh, oh, grand slam <laughs> and just I mean, a perfect game. Yeah, no yeah. <laughs> Just taking all the boxes of stuff, some of the rarest things you can do. Unbelievable. All in one. What a is she a senior? Man, way to go, Josie. She is, I'm not sure. I don't want to, I don't want to oh, shortchange okay. her. I'm not sure. She might be a junior or senior. Do you know? <laughs> I don't. Uh, this is sports I'm expert? too far removed these days. Okay. I should know that, but <laughs> no. we'll get it for Good you. Good night yeah. either way. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. All yeah. right. We'll have another look at your forecast right after this. Stories are told on our Instagram at WKBT News 8. Or you can always find us at news8000.com. Make dinner good tonight with Hardy's new tender platters. Crunchy, juicy chicken dipped in buttermilk and hand breaded. Served with garlic toast, fries, slaw, and an ice cold drink. Delicious. Down to the very last crumb. Hardy's. Goodness in the making. Ever think how easy your life could be with a lift chair from King Furniture? We have a great selection of quality lift chairs to choose from. A lift chair will easily lift you into a standing position. A lift chair gives you the independence you want and the comfort you need. And King Furniture has lift chairs starting at just $7.99 in all kinds of fabrics and leathers. Go from standing to sitting to reclining all in one easy motion with an easy to use hand control. Improve your life. Improve the life of someone you love with a lift chair from King Furniture. As your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we wear many hats. We take pride in serving our members and our community by going the extra mile in everything we do. Because we not only work here, we live here. Touchstone Energy Cooperatives, your source for power and information. After further review, we've seen so much goodness in these games. Hardee's is giving away free, crispy, juicy, hand-breaded chicken tenders from June 18th through the 30th when you download the Hardee's app and join my rewards. That's Hardee's. Goodness in the making. All right, most of the day, uh, night should be dry for most areas. We might see a few showers here and there, apparently to the north. But overall, I think even the morning commute should be dry. But it changes as we go throughout the time frame tomorrow with some heavy rainfall. Sure does. Thanks for joining us at 6. We'll see you at 10.